Okay. So we know that the inverse of a matrix can be calculated using this formula. We've done this with a two by two. Uh, the first step is to calculate the determinant of our matrix. For a two by two, we just draw our little fish, A times D minus C times B. Um, we've practiced that. Uh, if our determinant ends up being zero, then our matrix is singular and it's non-invertible. A inverse does not exist because one over zero is infinity. It's undefined. Uh, math blows up. We can't do that. So if we get anything but zero, if we get any non-zero number, that means it's invertible and non-singular. A inverse exists. We can move forward. For a square matrix that's bigger than two by two, uh, the determinant can be calculated using something called cofactor expansion. So the cofactor um, is a sine determinant of a smaller square matrix found by removing one or more of its rows and columns. Um, it's just a cofactor is just a smaller determinant. What we do is we're going to remove rows and columns from our matrix, find a determinant of the remaining numbers, uh, and we're going to do this over and over and over and over and over again. And the sign of the cofactor can be determined using this grid. So if we're finding the cofactor for the 1, 1 location, it would be a positive multiplied by that. If it's uh, uh, the 1, 2 location, we multiply that number by negative 1, or we change the sign, keep the sign, 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 etc. And we will go over examples of this. Um, so we're going to find a bunch of cofactors using these three steps. Once we know a bunch of cofactors, we can find our determinant using these steps. Okay. So we can use any row or any column in order to find the determinant using cofactor expansion. Um, we should end up with the same number. Typically, we choose the row or column with the most zeros because zero times a number is zero. It's really nifty, really um, handy. Yeah. We will go over many examples of this. Um, I'm not going to go over them right now. Uh, for a three by three, so cofactor expansion works for any size matrix, any size square matrix. For a three by three, there is another shortcut method that we can use that's similar to our fish, me fish method for a two by two. Um, we're going to multiply by the diagonals um, along the main diagonal and then the other diagonal and subtract those two numbers. And we'll go over an example of that as well. There are many properties of the determinant. Um, there's a couple I want to highlight, uh, interchanging rows, constant multiple, and elimination. These are our row operations. So if we apply row operation two, if we multiply a row by a non-zero number, then the sign on our determinant changes. If, oh shoot, no, 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 my bad. Then the, uh, okay, so let me start over. So I want to highlight three of them, um, interchanging rows, constant multiple, and elimination. Um, if we swap two rows, then the sign on our determinant changes. If we multiply a row by a constant, a single row, not the whole matrix, a simple, single row, then the determinant is also multiplied by that value. And if we perform just a strict elimination step, where we're saying row n equals row n plus some multiple of row m. Note, there's a one here. The row itself is not multiplied by a constant, just the one we're adding it to. Uh, then our determinant does not change. So I wanna highlight those three. Um, we will look at a couple others in, um, in lecture. Um, and the other ones are pretty straightforward, where the determinant of the transpose of a is equal to a, the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. Those ones are pretty straightforward. Once we find the determinant, once we know the determinant of A, once we know our matrix is, uh, is invertible, uh, then we can find the adjoint or the adjugate matrix, which for a 2 by 2, A and D just switch places and B and C change their sign. For anything bigger than a 2 by 2, um, the adjoint matrix is calculated as the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. So there's our cofactors again. There's lots of cofactors that we're calculating in this set of material. So what we do is we literally just find the cofactors for all of the elements in our matrix. So we find the cofactor for the 1, 1 location, find the cofactor for the 1, 2 location, the 2, 1 location, the 2, 2 location, etc. Keep going. And then we put them all in the matrix and transpose it. That's our adjoint matrix. So once we have our determinant, once we have our adjoint matrix, we can find A inverse. And we did it. Once we have A inverse, then the solution is X equals A inverse times B. 
So note, this is all in the context of finding the solution to a system of equations. Um, and there we go. Finding the inverse using this method, this method uh, to me is a little bit more straightforward, a little bit easier to calculate than using uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination in general. I try to avoid, um, I try to avoid uh, row operations when possible. Um, so this is actually a pretty good alternative. Um, computationally, Gauss-Jordan is a little bit simpler, but, um, but finding the adjoint matrix using cofactors is actually pretty nice. The last thing I want to mention in this video is something called Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule is another method for solving systems equations. So we have quite a few methods now. Gauss elimination, substitution, Gauss-Jordan elimination, um, graphically with lines, graphically with vectors. Uh, those are for two by twos um, and smaller. Um, we can do A inverse times B. And now Kramer's Rule. Uh, so Kramer's Rule is literally just calculating a bunch of determinants where if the determinant of A is not zero, so if a solution exists, um, then what we're going to do is we are going to solve our system by using this equation, or this is our generic one. So x of n equals a of n, the determinant of a of n over a, the determinant of a. So a of k, this is a of n, I made a typo. So a of n is a special matrix where the nth column in a is replaced by the b vector of the system. So a of 2 is going to have a, uh, all rows, column 1, b, and then a of all rows, column 3 to end. So row B, or row 2, is replaced, or column 2, is replaced by my B vector. All the other columns stay the same. So what we do is we find all of our A matrices, all of our AK matrices. So for however many unknowns we have, A1, A2, A3, for unknown 1, unknown 2, unknown 3, find all of those determinants, find the determinant of A, and then here's our solution x1 equals the determinant of a1 over the determinant of a. x2 equals the determinant of a2 over the determinant of a. X, any other unknown is a of that unknown divided by um, a. So unknown 1, unknown 2, unknown 3 corresponds to x1, x2, x3. So this would be a1 to use that one, a2 to solve for that one, and a3 to solve for that one. And there we go. We have our system equations. That's it for this week. That's all our material. So there's not much. Um, it's really just calculating a bunch of determinants. We will go over as many examples as we can in lecture, um, and hopefully it makes sense.